was split 50-50, half to the photographer and then half was the revenue for the company. And uh, 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 in this way, the, the company started to grow. Then in the 1950s, uh, he developed a new silver collector. And this was totally different from the other one. It was much larger. The first ones were about this big. And uh, this one was much larger. And it was supplied in a plastic tank. Now, if, if you know anything about plastic tanks, uh, plastics were just coming into development in the 40s. And uh, these plastic tanks that he had were about the size of an office wastebasket. And uh, some of the first plastic tanks. And so he supplied it with this plastic tank and all the other components that were involved. And there were some plastic tubing, some fittings, and a few other things and began to sell those and distribute those silver collectors. They were much more efficient. Uh, they would produce a lot more silver. And, uh, and so the company began to grow and began to grow. But that wasn't the important part. The important part was that customers would write back in and they'd say, you know, that silver collector is really doing a great job. I'm getting a lot of silver. Uh, I like what you're doing. I like uh, splitting the profits. But you know what? We need some more of those tanks that you supply and some more of those fittings and tubes and tubing, plastic tubing, because we could use those in other, ass, other parts of our laboratory. Well, what that did was that started a whole new company, which is what we are today, United States Plastic Corporation. Um, and so little by little, uh, these orders for the silver collectors would go out, but along with them would go some other boxes with the tanks and the, the uh, fittings and the tubing and so on, whatever else these folks would order. Since he had been doing the uh, silver collectors through the mail, it was only natural to start shipping uh, these other orders uh, through the mail. And so that's what happened. And in that way, we became a mail order company. Uh, kind of like Amazon today. Uh, that's what our company has developed or has been in much longer than Amazon's been around, as a matter of fact. Um, <clears throat> then one day, as he uh, was, di was distributing these parts like this, it was, it was all word of mouth to speak of at that time, a consultant came in one day and he said, you know what you need to do? You need to take these items that you're selling and you need to put them into a catalog. And uh, so he put together a small catalog, just a few pages, that listed these items that uh, were being sold. And uh, uh, started mailing these catalogs out across the country. And then the orders would come in and they'd fill those orders and send them out. Um, and that's what we did when I joined the company back in 1972. I can remember we would have stacks of orders. Uh, people had mailed them in. Most of our orders, 80, 90 percent of them, came through the mail back in those days. And uh, uh, we would have stacks of orders every day to process. And uh, back in those days, it was before the, all the just-in-time and all the speed that we have to have uh, today. Uh, it was kind of nice to have that pile. That meant job security. If there were some orders left over at the end of the day, that meant we had something to do when we came in the next morning. And uh, that's kind of the attitude that we had. Today, that's totally changed, and I'll tell you about that in a minute. Um, and so the company continued to grow. And yet in the, in the 90s, we hit a plateau, and it just seemed like we couldn't, make things go. How many of you, now most of you are probably pretty young back in those, how many of you remember Y2K? Anybody? Oh, you all remember about it, okay. And you know all the hype about it and uh, how uh, the world was going to come to an end on December 31st, 1999 at 11.59 uh, at night. Everything, you know, the the computers were all going to stop and everything was going to be a problem. Well, in 1998, the fall of 1998, some of our sales agents came to us and they said, you know, we're getting some funny orders. We're getting a lot of orders for buckets, for uh, barrels.
bottles, plastic bags, and, uh, you know, there's a lot of them. We don't understand what this is all about. Well, we got to thinking about it a little bit, and we discovered. And, well, and this, then they added this. And these people are weird. <laughs> and I said, what do you mean? He said, well, they're just weird. And uh, so we began to analyze that, this, and we realized that these were some of the people who were really fanatics about this whole Y2K thing, and they were getting prepared for it. They were beginning to store water. They were storing food. They were doing all kinds of things. So we thought, uh, well, the vice president of the company came to me one day and he said, hey, Wes, you know, how much business would we have to do to justify putting up a website that would sell Y2K products? Well, we hadn't been doing anything on the web at that point. And uh, I said, I don't know, $200,000 maybe? So uh, we put a website together with about 80 products that we saw people were buying and we ordered in a five or ten other products that it seemed like went along with this stuff. And we took one of our call center agents and we trained her to go on to uh, chat boards and so on, and they would be talking. These people were really connected. Um, they would talk back and forth, and they'd say, where can you get five-gallon buckets? Well, she'd answer them, you can get them at U.S. Plastics for $3.95. Well, these orders started coming in and coming in, and uh, we, we got the website going, and... Uh, so in 1999, I can remember that Tom Brokaw came on and said, we have one year to get ready for Y2K. And every night on the news, there was something about Y2K. And so our orders, uh, you know, were going up and up and up and up until March when uh, the war in, in Kosovo and in Europe broke out. And uh, then things, the interest in that all dwindled off. We had a little bit of an upsurge at the end of the year. But... Uh, when it was all over with, we tallied it up, and we had done about a half a million dollars worth of sales in these products that uh, uh, we called them Y2K products. That wasn't the important thing, though. We did twice, two and a half times what I had estimated we might do. But the important thing was that it taught us how to sell over the Internet. And here is something that... Uh, it wasn't something that we had um, strategized particularly. Uh, it was something that an opportunity came along and we grabbed it and uh, the Lord blessed it and uh, it taught us how to sell on the internet. Today, we ship about a thousand orders a day and nearly half of those come over the internet. Huge difference. And that all came about because of that, uh, that one little... Uh, thing. So there again, we took another uh, jump. About five years ago, we came to another uh, stagnation point, and that was because we, we had run out of space. We didn't have any place to add new products, and that's one of the important things in our type of a business is to uh, add products. So um, I employed a consultant. He came in and uh, began to do some studies on our layout, our products, and he said, you know what? I thought we were going to have to build more buildings. We already have five acres under roof, and uh, that's a lot of upkeep, a lot of maintenance, a lot of overhead. And uh, he said, you know what? I think we can do this and perhaps make it so that we can nearly double the business without adding any more concrete, just reorganizing everything in the warehouse. Well, we had five acres worth of product uh, stored all over the building, and we had conveyors and so on. And I thought, my goodness, how can we, how can we reorganize this and still ship a thousand orders a day? Well, he came up with a plan, and we decided to go ahead with it. And so uh, about a year and a half ago, uh, two years ago right now, we were in the planning stations stages, and about a year and a half ago, we started this project where we moved everything in our five-acre buildings, except for two machines, and uh, shipped orders every day, installed a, a state-of-the-art conveyor system, racking system, to bring us up to 2009 at the time, 2009 standards, and included in that we had to bring our building up to uh, new code uh, by putting in new lighting systems, new heating systems, and new uh, sprinkler systems, all that, and we, kind of, we finished that up about a year ago right now with a totally computer 